Hey, yo, shalom. All praises to the Mosai. Yo, Yehoshua, this is Sounds from YYBY. So, what I'm going to talk about today, actually, I ain't going to talk about nothing. But I'm going to talk about something. <laughs> nah, nah, seriously, seriously. I'm, I'm going to talk about some knowledge, experience with music. Um, I can only give y'all my Jews. I can't give you nobody else Jews. But when I first started doing music, right, I was dealing with, I, I got my, my own money and I invested in it and I bought certain dolls. I bought one doll that was reason at that time. Um, and I, I said this story before, but I, I, I'm trying to get to a point. So I bought reason. And I bought a, a new computer. It was an e-machine. And I, I, I think it was, I spent like $500 on reasons at that time. I think it was the same price. I think so. If I'm correct. Three, four, whatever. And I was an artist. Hold up. But I was an artist first. I was already doing music. I was in the, you know, running around doing music with my peoples, you know, learning the business. My cousin was showing, teaching us the business, you know, and uh, I was dealing with a few industry people, stuff, but it never got to that certain level because once I understood the business, I move and thought different. And a lot of times you got to be a puppet to be in the position, to be put in the position with with, with people. So, and I ain't, I ain't been no puppet to nobody. So, I don't love money. So um <clears throat> so I bought reasons, right? And I don't even know the reason why I start doing like the doll stuff, like the music stuff. Like I was an artist and I said, okay, I didn't know if I wanted to make beats, you know, or be an engineer, just record and be an engineer. Like, cause I was an artist first. I I, I didn't think that, okay, I'm gonna just record myself and just mix everything or try to learn how to mix everything. I just tapped in doing it all because all that stuff was in my blood. Production, engineering, anything dealing with music always been in my blood because of my family and because of my nationality. It was in the blood. But I didn't when I invested in reason, I knew it was I didn't I didn't even really know it was just only for making beats. I just knew it it looked like a rack. You know, and so I got it, making beats, and I realized I like I can't record in this joint. I can't record in it. I can't record vocals. So I had to find other dolls. So I end up looking for you know, Pro Tools. I didn't like Pro Tools. Uh, then it was an industry standard, you know. But I ain't you know, but I knew it in the day. It ain't about you what you use is what you know. So. I didn't like Pro Tools, D G U I, you know, uh, G U I, and I didn't like the, uh, you know, the concept of Pro Tools, but I knew it was powerful. Don't get it effed up. Pro Tools is powerful, people. When it comes to mixing and mastering, Pro Tools get the job done. I don't care what nobody say. They can they can talk about this industry standard stuff. I, I don't care about that because any doll you know can be industry standard. Pro Tools are just what they decide to use that they want to depend on at that time when they could de when they leaving from analog going straight to digital. You get what I'm saying? So, but I I still didn't like the the GUI in the in the workflow of it. Um, so I went I went to Cubase, Steinberg Cubase, in the window, and the workflow was just shit just. Hell, about the same, you know. And I like, man, I got tired of moving around, man. So I stuck with Cubase, but Cubase wasn't good with beats. So what I was, my point is that I was making beats inside Reason. Then I got, then if I want to come up with a crazy vocal idea or lay a hook down on the beat real quick, you know, or or somebody come in the studio and say, hey, I like that beat, or let's lay something down. I gotta sit here and export the beat out. Open up the window, Cubase or, or, or Cubase. Create a John, 
drop the beat in, do everything with the beat, and then start recording. By that time, 10 minutes don't went past, 20 minutes went past, based on what you're trying to do, right? And I said, like, no, nah, this ain't it. This is not how it's supposed to be. Or I make a beat inside reason and, you know, and record inside this door and master inside this door. Because, you know, it was, a, it was a moment of time where they say, oh, this is good for mastering. This is good for recording, mixing, and this is good for making beats. And, it, 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 and to a certain extent, a lot of the dolls out right now has pros and cons. Some are pro with certain things like Ableton Live or Ableton Live is pro and, 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 and you no know, dominant making beats, but you still can record in it. Um, but it's still levels to that, you know, and I always say this to people. So, so that, that was my approach. That's what I was doing. I say this workflow ain't right. It, uh, it's slowing my workflow down because you know, I need something where I could do everything in. Where like if I'm making a beat and I come up with a vocal idea, I don't gotta export nothing out, export it out the right way, export it out the proper way, <laughs> whatever you want to use, and put open up the next doll and name it and <laughs> change the sample rate, blah 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 blah, do all the other stuff and drop it in and set up the recording and then record. Like I said, nah, I'm not listen. But when you inside one doll that can provide all three, well, four, I say recording, mixing, mastering, or sound design, you can get it done real quick. You can you can make a beat, you can be making a beat right now, and during the beat, you can have an audio track and just record exactly the hook to that audio track right there while you're mixing and changing knobs and turning pan left and right, changing levels up and down, adding effects and making it sound a different way with the beat. You know what I'm saying? You can tune into that doll doing all that instead of just sitting here trying to export it out to go in another doll just to do another thing. And my mind was already set that way, but I just didn't know what could I do or use. So I search, I search, I search. I stayed in my bag. I search, I search, I search, I search. Okay. And just to let everybody know in the world, man, I'm going to be real with y'all, man. When it comes to, I temper with all these dolls in the world, man. And I actually love them all because each one of them had certain unique stuff that you like damn i wish it it was inside of another doll like i get i kid you not and it's like damn why this doll ain't doing what this doll doing you know but you just got to find the one that 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 provides more for you you know uh and then i i assume they'll probably come around or make your own damn doll and that's a whole nother level but so i always Temper with dolls, playing with dolls, doing all type of things. And I, like I say, I said, I wasn't, that didn't sound right. Th I, I didn't want to do, do one thing in one doll and go to another, man. I wanted to do everything in another. So I started trying different things and Magic Samplitude, Ableton Live, FL Studio. I said, nah, because one, again, I was an artist first, I always been an artist first. But at that time, it was about recording and mixing. But I always knew how to make beats and produce. And I mean by, you know, when we be in the cypher, if you know what freestyle is, when you battle rap, we somebody bebops, another boy rap, I start rapping, they bebop. So people always, used to always say, Yo, you, should, you should make beats, bro. You should make beats. So I, ta I tapped into that. So as a producer, I said, okay, I need something to make beats in. And, and that was reason. So I had that, you know, I was I was working on that, trying to elevate my skills and get better and better with that. Uh I caught on to that part, but at the same time I needed to record. Uh so, so I was searching around over the years, trying different dolls. I say two thousand, what, nine, ten, you know, and um 
I realized like, you know, well not 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 at that time, but I realized but be way before that I did I realized that from the I mean from the beginning I knew that I didn't want to do a cer I didn't want to accomplish a certain thing inside of another dog and then go to another dog to do something that I, I needed something that I can do everything in. I needed a dog that I could do everything in. Everybody don't need that. Some only focus on whatever they focus on. But me, I'm an all-arounder. It's just that simple, and I keep saying this. So, and when I search and search, I found the Dog Studio One. It was able to master. Well, any dog you can master in, you can master a song. But the real meaning of mastering is really when you master an album. When you master more than one record and you get them together and you blend them together and you create an image of that music to make it sound a certain way. That's what mastering really is. It's not just when you just do one song, even though you master that song. So, yes, you can master in any uh, dog. But even the dogs that we was using back then... You still had most people still when they got uh I think it was Soundforge, if I'm correct, y'all help me with that. It was a mastering dog wave. It was Wave Lab. Now I forgot what it was, but it was Soundforge. I had it. I still got it right now on my CDs, my old CDs. But I just don't remember the name. But it was a a, a special dog made for only mastering a album because everybody was doing albums, pushing that out. They weren't just doing a record, one song. Okay, and so that's what they was using. So they use Pro Tools, whatever door they use on that, and then they use a Soundforge and stuff like that, and then they use another door to make beats. And you all over the place. So now you spending money, you buying, paying for this door update, you paying for this door update, and you paying for another door update. You paying for the beat, the mastering, and the mixing and mastering. Oh, I mean the mixing. Right? That's what you're doing. You're spending a whole lot of money on different dolls. So just to provide these world these well-rounded things that you're trying to accomplish. I said, nah, that ain't make sense. I'm not doing that. I knew it was something. So again, I found Studio One. And Studio One, it provides where you can master a whole dog. I mean, I'm sorry, master a whole album. You can master a whole album in there. Put the metadata in there, that's which is important. That's like a, a pre-copyright, which people don't understand. Is it's not just about metadata, it's a pre-copyright to let you know like who did this stuff, you know, in MP3 and flat. Um it's good for mixing and mastering, because that's what most people say. And then through the times of versions four, I think three, four, no, no, uh, version four, I think four and five, they really got to the step to, you know, really got in a bag. With focusing on the production part of it, you know, adding different things where you can make beats and everything. So, um, and even if you got Studio One right now, you got Studio One Six. When it comes to features, it's great. Do it have more features than some other dolls? No, but the simplicity of it is on a whole nother level than. All these other dogs, the workflow and the simplicity, and that's what's very important. Um, but what I want to say is that you can do all three of those. You can do all those things inside Studio One. You can. You don't just have to go in the door and make just make beats. You can go to Studio One, make the beat. You can record, go straight direct, record, mix and master on a whole another level. And then if you want to master the whole album, then you got that option. And that's the point I want to get to. I know I, I went around to, you know, create a whole story about this. But what I want to get y'all to understand is that this is only for the people who are all arounders, not just who do one specific thing. These are all arounder people. That skillful. The artists, they understand the music perspective in every angle. 
every situation from a, from an artist perspective, from dancing, from making beats to recording to mastering to sound design, hell to putting sounds behind movies or commercials. Dancing give you rhythm. Understanding different when you experience different genres, it give you an understanding of how that move that music move. I come from different genres. My family, you know, I I've been around all these different genres of music. I was raised around it. So when I speak and talk, certain people won't grasp to what I'm saying because they only caught up in one genre or they only do one thing and there's nothing wrong with that. Do that great. But what I'm saying is that when it comes to all around the dog, ain't nothing mess with S1, man. Ain't nothing messing with it. Again, every dog has its pros and cons, flaws and weaknesses, whatever you want to, you know, flaws, weaknesses, strengths, and whatever it is. Uh, there's certain dogs that got more options, like the windows that got more options in Studio One. But when it comes to all around dog providing production and, and every one of these features, that's Studio One. And then once you tap into it, you know, yeah, we, we cry about other features. We cry about other updates. But do, do it stop you from getting anything done at that moment? At that moment, when you're dealing with that dog, does it stop you from getting anything done? Do it hold back your creativity? If it's no, then it's a blessing that they add the other features to the dog. And also to add to that is like, well, are you a hobbyist? Or you you a hobbyist and you you do this for business? Because based on what you do, it's a different approach for it. See, when you're a businessman, it's time is money. And now you, you will look at a dog in a different perspective from a person who only do this for a hobby. When they come home from work and they just want to go in their side of a man cage or their woman cage and tap into things and do, boom, do all this. That's a different approach. That's just something that doesn't satisfy you. And you're like, I wish I had this. And you're creating all these crazy things in your mind. But when it's a person who about business and also who do it as a hobby and for the love, it's a different approach and you're looking for different things. And all I'm trying to tell y'all in this world, producers, engineers, and man, listen, man. Yo, if whatever works for you at that moment, what you do, that's what you use. Can a dog be better than another? Yes, because it provides more than the other dog. But can you be great using that dog? Hell yes. That's what matters. Because when that record come out and, it's, and it blow up, with one of the top artists or whatever it may be or you put it on, 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 a, on a commercial or you put that music on a you put sound design into a movie they not asking you like what you what doll you use they not asking you like what software you bought or how long you know what you invest in what plugins you use they're not asking what EQ what compressor they don't give a damn about none of that shit man they don't care about that. They care about the quality. The quality. That's what matters. So, two points. That Studio One, to me, provides every aspect of music. Three. I mean, not three, but the, the second point is that when, you, when you're doing music, It's not about what you what you use, it's what you know. Yeah. This is why why be why.